The spirit was clothed in one simple deep green robe or mantle bordered with white fur and on its head it wore no other covering than a holly wreath set here and there with shining icicles. Girded round its middle was an antique scabbard, but no sword was in it, and the ancient sheath was eaten up with rust. Hey everyone, and welcome back. So, for today's video, I'll be going through the process for my 2021 Foundations Revealed competition entry, uh, which was the Ghost of Christmas Present. So, for some reason, this has always been one of my favorite literary characters. Um, it's always been one of the costumes that I just dreamt of making, and so I finally just went and did it. So, before we get started into the actual, like, meat of this video, um, the pattern that I used for this robe was the Mood Fabrics. Uh, this is the Hibiscus Robe pattern. Um, so this was one of those, uh, PDF, print, tape together, cut it out kind of patterns. Um, overall, it was a pretty decent pattern. Um, I'm actually filming this after I've already made the robe, so uh, it was a pretty decent pattern. Um, the one issue that I had with it um, was this pattern piece here. So this is the side part of the robe skirt and it says to cut it on the fold. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what got lost in translation. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe for certain fabrics it works better to cut it on the fold. For this robe, after many long hours of trying to figure this out, um, at about one o'clock in the morning, I finally figured out that no, you don't cut it on the fold, which could be clarified um, on the pattern itself. Now, along with the pattern, there was a blog post done by the designer on Mood Fabrics, um, but it wasn't very detailed as far as the cutting out process uh, or anything like that, so. Move fabrics if you're watching maybe just add a few little notes um to this pattern um i don't know maybe i downloaded an older version i don't know so that was really the only issue that i had with this pattern um now as far as fabric the main fabric that i used uh for this robe was this beautiful green velvet. Uh, this is a crushed green velvet. I bought this online from fabrics.com. Um, so this is going to make up the main part of the robe. I just, oh, I love it. It's gorgeous. Now for the lining, I went with this. Um, this is just a green poly satin lining fabric. Uh, I found it at Walmart in these pre-cut sections. This was terrible to work with. I wound up not showing you guys the process of me cutting out the pattern pieces in this because it was so awful to cut out. Um, but that's a different story for a different day. Other than that, as far as the lining, it's worked pretty well. Now for the trim, Oops. For the trim, I'm using this four inch wide fur, white faux fur trim. This is from Joanne Fabrics. Um, this wasn't too bad to work with. It's very fluffy, very fuzzy. There's all kinds of little fur bits floating around in here right now. Um, but as you guys will see later on in the video, it did cause me some problems uh, as far as the sleeve ruffles on the robe so um but those are basically the pieces that went together to create this costume let's go ahead and jump right in to the project here i'm just laying out the pattern pieces and using some pattern weights i.e big washers from lowe's 
kind of weigh down the pattern and just hold it in place. And then I took some chalk and I drew around the pattern pieces. And then after removing the paper pattern, I then went through and pinned along the chalk line just to make sure everything stayed in place and didn't move around. And then I proceeded to cut out the pieces. This is pretty much the same process that I used for every single pattern piece that I cut out. And then of course Miss Becky decided to help. pieces are cut out. This is the bodice piece here. So up here this front part of the shoulder gathers into the back so that's what this little wobbly bit is here. Um, and then on the pattern there's places here in the back where you take some darts and then here on the front piece you take some darts. You can see the little corners down here where those darts would come up. Here is where I should point out that the directions on the website actually say to fold over the edge and create a facing on the pattern. This is actually what I wound up doing, so please ignore the next 30 seconds. Both sides and then it just wraps around like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the side seams and the shoulder seams first and then I'll probably put it on my dress form so I can fit the darts, especially here on the back, because um, I want the back to be a little bit more fitted. This I want to just kind of, I kind of like that. I, I like that kind of gathered look there. Here we've got the velvet. Um, this is turned inside out, as you can tell. So, once again, gathering up here. Darts in the back. Um, and then darts here. Although, I'm kind of debating about just gathering it here and there. So I get that nice... I don't know. Like I said, let me get the side seams and the shoulder seams stitched first, then I'll I'll fiddle around with it and see what I come up with. With the help of my assistant, I basically just used a back stitch on the main seams of the bodice, and this was both the lining fabric and the velvet. Yeah, green is definitely his color. Yeah, my little helper. Yeah. Yeah, green looks good on you. Or you look good on green. And this is where Oliver decides to jump up on my lap, which is okay, until he starts walking around. And then proceeds to knock over the camera with his tail. Yes, I am wearing 18th century stays. This was part of my corset challenge, which I will link that video uh, down below. But here I'm just finishing up uh, my sleeve ruffles. So basically I took two layers of velvet, stitched them together, and then turned them inside out using the armhole. 
that was already there. Okay, here she is, almost. So, the uh, bodice part has been sewn to this skirt. Um, you can see here, I decided to go ahead and just form a dart on each side. And then I folded back the front to form the facing here. Um, that's actually what the pattern uh, says to do. So I did that. Uh, sleeves are on. Let's turn her around here. I did a little bit of a double box pleat here. So one pleat, two pleat, same thing, one pleat, two pleat, um, just to kind of help fit the back a little bit. So I think that's that. You can see my lovely chalk lines. And then pretty much the skirt goes on, oops, relatively straight. And then I just pleated the skirt here um, to fit the waistband of the bodice. So as you can see, it is turned inside out. There's a reason for that. Um, I wanted to basically fit the velvet first. It's a lot heavier, there's a lot more structure to it, so I figured, you know, fiddle with the thing that's heavy and thick and structured, and then take the loosey-goosey satiny lining here, and then basically fit that to the velvet bodice. That makes sense. So that's going to be my next step uh, to fit the lining bodice to that and then attach the bodice to the skirt. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. Is this a conventional way to do this? Probably not. Is there an easier way to do it? Probably. Do I have any regrets? So far, no. We'll see what happens. So, let's get lining skirt stitched on to lining bodice, and then put lining and outer fabric together. So here I'm using a technique that was very common in the 18th century uh, for putting linings into garments. And basically this is folding under the edges of both the quote unquote fashion fabric and the lining fabric, and then just pinning those together. And then once this is done, you just use 
a felling stitch to attach the two layers. So this is different from the bag lining method that is commonly used today, where basically you put the two layers of fabric right sides together and then you flip everything inside out. Um, I actually found this method, this felling method, a lot nicer because then there was less chance of the lining showing through. So, can y'all see my problem? Because there's a problem. So, I figured something like this would happen, where I pin the outer edge of the fur trim to the outer edge of the sleeve. Um, these are the, as I call them, the sleeve ruffles on steroids uh, for this robe. And I knew I'd get some puckering up here, but I thought, you know, I, I could fix that somehow. Um, but there's just way too much puckering going on. So I did some research and I found a video on YouTube. Ooh, what is with the red glare in here? Good grief. Um, but I found a video on YouTube, which I will link in the description down below, on basically it's how to apply fur trim to the bottom of a circle skirt, which basically this is a circle skirt, but with just a little teeny tiny hole in the middle for an arm rather than a waist. So I'm like, okay, this, this should be good. So what... She recommended in the video <clears throat> was basically let me unpeel that marking like measuring how wide the fur trim is give you give yourself a little bit of seam allowance and then mark that around the hem and then you basically just you sew it like that, and then you flip it over. And then you just hand stitch. Or, okay, she had a machine. <laughs> I don't have a machine. Um, so, it's a little bit more work than what I anticipated. Um, you know, basically you're sewing to the shorter edge around on the inside and then you just kind of have to like stretch the fur trim a little bit to to get it around the, the outside there if that makes sense. This is the Wednesday before this costume is due. Um, so I was I'm hoping still to get it done by the weekend so that my husband and I can go out and, and get some really good pictures. Um, but yeah, I'm really getting close to the, the deadline here, and I've still got a lot of work to do. Um, not that much. Mostly it's just applying the fur trim right now, which, yeah. <laughs> so, I need to go through, unpin all of this, basically redo it. And, I don't know, see if that works. So.
After pinning on the fur trim, I went through and just attached it using a simple whip stitch. Alright, one down, one to go. Okay, so here is, this is sleeve number two, but I've already, as you can see there, pinned and stitched that first side. Uh, so that was the inner side there. And then I went through, laid this down as flat as I could and kind of pulled the fur down and pinned it in certain places here. So, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it looks a little funky. Like it's, it's pulling up on the edges and everything because it just, yeah. But it worked-ish on my other sleeve, so it will work here. So what I have to do now is just kind of take this and just kind of match up the edges here and kind of have to pull on the fur a little bit in order to get it somewhat lined up and then pin it into place on this side so I've got pins going on both sides here Ouch. Okay. and then as I stitch along it'll just kind of fall into place so, but one thing that I noticed, my other sleeve, I noticed that the inside here kept getting these little bubbles um, whenever I would try to lay it flat. But since this is going to be like the sleeve ruffle, like you can see the armhole up there, my arm goes through that. And this is like 18th century sleeve ruffles on steroids here. Um, I noticed that the bubbling you didn't really notice it all that much. So now that the fur trim has been applied, I'm now attaching the ruffles to the sleeves and I'm using a back stitch to do this because the ruffles are super heavy. And then I'll just pull the lining through, fold under the edge and do a felling stitch like what I did for the rest of the robe lining. Here is the holly crown that I made. Let me do a little turn around here. Please ignore how ugly my, my head looks here. So what I did to make this, I actually used, you can see poking through here. This was actually a dance tiara that I wore um, for a dance recital, yeesh, I'm not going to say how many years ago. <laughs> um, but basically what I did is I took this fake holly that I have. Um, the branches were maybe about yay long. I just attached the holly to the wire base of the tiara using floral tape. You can see some floral tape there. Um, and then like these little sparkly bits, these were already on the tiara. So I figured that'll just add some sparkle. But then on the sides here, I took some icicle. These are actually Christmas tree ornaments that I borrowed from my grandmother. And there were little wire hooks on the top of them. So you can kind of see there. And I just kind of used the wire hooks, looped it over either the holly branch or the, the wire base, whichever was easiest. And I did three on each side. 
um, just to kind of hang down and frame my face. And that's all there was to the tiara. Um, now here on the back, you can see where these were sticking out. Um, I fixed that by just kind of hiding them under my hair and then taking some bobby pins and just kind of pinning them down into place. So uh, when you guys see the final thing, you really won't notice little green stems sticking out of the back of my head. So that's all there was to it as far as the crown. So. Um, so yes, I did film the intro the same day that I'm filming this kind of wrap up here. But um, this is now two days out uh, from me finishing and submitting the entry. Um, so there's still a few more days that I have to go by before, uh, you know, the, the pictures go live on the Foundations Revealed website. Um, but basically, I just kind of want to wrap up about some of the things that I learned by doing this project, some of the issues that I had. Um, overall, it was it was fun. Um, there were a lot of new things, like I've never worked with velvet before. I've never worked with this polyester satin fabric before. I've never worked with fur trim before. So basically this was a whole new ball game for me. Um, so and other than a few issues with the pattern, uh, but I figured it out. Um, so as far as cutting things out, I didn't have too much trouble other than yeah, that satin lining. Um, it wanted to stretch and pull and basically not turn out in the exact shape that I needed it to. So that was an issue. And then of course, as you guys saw with the fur trim, there were some issues, um, but everything worked out. It looked gorgeous uh, as you guys saw so I'm really proud of it uh, so now I'm just keeping my fingers crossed um, as far as the competition goes although I honestly don't care if I win the the big prizes um, this was just a project for me to work on and get it out there so other folks can see my work um, you know that's that was one of the important things for me is just kind of getting myself out there, putting myself out there. So, um, like I said, we'll see what happens. Um, but that's about all I've got. So if you like this video, please like, uh, this video. Yeah, of course, if you like this video, you like this video, right? Oi. Um, but please like subscribe. Um, you know, if you liked it, put a comment down in the comment section. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, throw a comment down there. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. My cameraman sucks. <laughs>